At Kroger Pharmacy, CARE is making it easy to get vaccinated. CARE is helping you stay protected from flu, COVID, and RSV. Seasonal vaccines are available seven days a week with evening hours. CARE is giving you a shot at staying healthy this season. Walk in whenever is best and get multiple vaccines in one visit at your local Kroger Pharmacy. So come and get the protection you need while protecting those around you. Kroger Health, a world of care is in store. Visit Kroger.com slash vaccines for more. Restrictions and exclusions apply. See site for details. Welcome to Second and Saints. I'm John <laughs> Hendricks alongside Ross Jackson. I uh I uh I mean how do you how do you how do you start a show uh, like you know after everything uh, is happening? You know what I'm saying? It's I, like yeah, I think the way I could you put did on it a was facade. Perfect. Yeah, I could put on this facade, I could do all these things, I could just be like, but man, this is uh good lord, rock bottom. Oh, boy. Like I could I, I mean, like this has been weeks. Like I felt like you know the week before was kind of like, okay, that that's the, the bottom. That's like, you know, the, the floor, no. you know, all this other stuff. And then the week before that, and the week before that, I mean, it's like, okay, you just lost to the Carolina Panthers. And now you're one of the worst teams in the league that you yeah, lost to one of the worst team, if not the worst team in the league. Well, let's jump into it, man. Ross, uh, yeah. this game, let's talk about it. Yeah. 22-23 loss by the New Orleans Saints. I think the fourth game now this season to where they've had a lead in the fourth quarter and lost it uh, yeah. over on a, a defensive drive at four minutes and 28 seconds when the Carolina Panthers are facing a, I believe it was a first and 23, if I recall correctly. Uh, the Saints had a uh, win percentage of 89%. Uh, at that point, that was a four minutes, 28 seconds left in the game. And then, of course, they surrendered the touchdown at the end of the game. And then that ended up kind of changing it. And I think that like the game is one thing we could probably move through pretty quickly because there are a couple of yeah. like nice things to point out about the game. But and, and of course, an important update that we should give on Chris Olave. But yes. uh, beyond that, like to me, everything else that's important about this game is the ripple effects that take place after. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, look, I, it, it's sad because it overshadows what an amazing game Alvin Kamara had. 215 yeah. yards, all purpose. Like, he was just getting after it. I mean, he didn't break the rushing record today. That'll be against the Falcons. whoop de doo uh, and, You know, and it's sad because now, you know, this ripple effect, like you said, not many people are going to be on hand in the Falcons game to watch this happen. And that sucks for Alvin. Like, he doesn't deserve that. And um, but you know, look, that that's one thing that gets overshadowed. I thought Shamar Jean Charles played a pretty good game there. You know, I think, you know, people were like, who in the heck is this guy? And we talked a little bit about him before and all that stuff. And, and he's a good dude. He's played in this league for a while. And, mm -hmm. you know, when it came down to it, did your defense make a stop? Right. Like that's the big thing. Um, you know, that's, that's tough. And, and so I, I think that, you lost Chris Olave, like you said, early in the game. That was crazy as it is. You get the the social media tirade rants from Michael Thomas. You get all that stuff. It's just um, it's tough. But I, I think Alvin. I mean, I quickly because we got so much more to talk about than the actual yeah. game. But Alvin's definitely had some of his best football today. Yo, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, career high and uh, not career high, sorry, season high in carries today with 29, 155 rushing yards, 60 additional receiving yards. Um, as you mentioned, 215 total. I, I thought Camaro was absolutely brilliant today. I thought he looked great. Uh, he should have been. It's weird to say that he should have been an even greater focus in the game, but there were situations to where, uh, you know, on a fourth and one, instead of trying to draw them off sides, you've got a, a running back that was averaging five over five yards per carry, maybe hand the ball to him. Or at least have him on the field. Same thing with Taysom Hill. At least have him on the field uh, for those situations yeah. and things like that. So when I say he, you know, you could make an argument that he should have been a greater part of the focus. I mean, in those situational moments uh, and things like that. But he had a, a remarkable game. Um, I'm glad that you highlighted uh, Shamar John Charles. Of course, anybody that's been a second and Saints listener through training camp, they know all about John Charles. Actually, if they listen to us 
last year, at the end of last season, we talked a lot about John Charles and um, or, or or wrote a lot about John Charles as well with um, uh, everything that was going on with uh, you know him coming in and helping on special teams and all those other things. Foster Moreau had one of the better catches oh we'll see God. all season. Um, John Charles' interception might be one of the best interceptions I've ever seen. Um, yeah. Just like great stuff when it comes to all that, but of course that all gets over that all gets overshadowed by uh, a lack of discipline again. Penalties, ten penalties over hundred yards for penalties yeah. for New Orleans. Missed tackles, uh, explosive plays. I believe the Saints surrendered the first forty-yard play to Carolina of their season. Uh, a loss to Bryce Young, which says enough all by itself. Uh, and uh, you know, play calling, uh, all these other things. I, I think there's. All these other issues, sort of this moving target continues for New Orleans in terms of what went wrong this game, what went wrong this play, that play, whatever it might be. And, and I think the Saints are in store for much needed change at, at this point. I, I don't think that it's unfair to say that at all. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Foster because, man, that was a grown man catch. Was like hell of a catch, dude. That was such a good catch. And, and look, you know, I mean, Derek had rust early on. He said that, admitted it. And, you know, again, DA seems to find different excuses saying that he was rusty and all these other things. But I thought that there were certain times I hated that fourth down call, uh, the fourth and four. I mean, golly, you yeah. need four yards and you're you're sitting there. Juwan's the first option. But then you throw a 50 50 ball to Cedric Wilson Jr. Like that. That's just not what I would expect. And then that fourth and one call. Uh, I mean, what I'm reminded of is the, the, the game that they needed a yard I think it was the yep. Eagles game, right? And they're yep. like, at some point, we got to be able to pick up a yard. Their season is practically on the line. and You can't get one yard. You don't trust your offensive line, who was playing extremely well, to get a single yard with Taysom or, or even handed to Adam Prentice, car straight ahead. Uh, Alvin, who was blowing it up. You don't trust your offensive line to get one yard. And then they kept Derek Carr clean the entire game. Mm -hmm. And then the last drive, you get sacked. You know what I mean? Like, yep. so it's just yep. like first it unravels game, first sack the game. at the absolute perfect time for New Orleans. And it, it's just, it's comical, y'all. Like, I, I, I don't know how to, to say it. Like, we're up here in the press box and we're just like, you know, sitting here thinking it, too much time. They're, they're, they're going to find a way. They're going to do it. And, you know, tomorrow gets the, the PI call and then they score mm -hmm. a touchdown. It's just like, you, you, you have a chance, but. I, I don't know. I, I, you can point fingers at, at the defense. You can point the fingers at the offense. I, I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because it all centers around your head coach. It all centers around yep. coaching, right? And you've lost seven in a row. And, uh, again, I don't know there's many of us that cover this team that have not suggested that it's time for a change, but it's time for a change. Yeah. Yeah, very clearly. And, and look, the timeline of when that change happens is going to be kind of the next piece of the conversation. That's what the New Orleans Saints kind of have to figure out. I, I liked your tweet that you put out there when you said the next 24 hours will be telling. I think you're yeah. you're you're spot on with that because uh, what well, you have the trade deadline coming up on Tuesday. So there's personnel stuff that could potentially be changed, but also the head coach situation, right? Like either you're going to make that change tomorrow on, on Monday, whenever you're listening to this, sorry, uh, on Monday or uh, you're going to make that change at the off season. There's kind of nothing that's going to happen in between unless something super dramatic happens. Here, here's one. Here, here's one reality that I thought of while you were talking about. At sometimes, at some point, you just have to be able to pick up a yard. Um, yeah. In the third quarter, the Saints trusted their punter to go and get a fourth and one, <laughs> uh, but then didn't trust Alvin Kamara at Taysom Hill to go and get that fourth and one. At, in the fourth quarter, at the end of the game, when they really, really needed it uh, more than anything else. Now, that is not to slight Matthew Hayball, who ran, by the way, over 20 miles an hour. He had over 20 miles an hour mm. on the run. Dude's got wheels. Dude's got wheels. Mm. Um, but it, crazy to me, wild to me, that you trust your punter on fourth and one, but you don't trust Alvin Kamara Taysom Hill on fourth and one. And, and I turned to you and I said – if they convert that, they ran another 230 off the clock. I mean, you maybe yep. 245 off the clock. You could have put yourself in. And, and look, even in one of those where Alvin goes out of bounds with under four minutes to go, that was a, a tough one too. Right. But I mean, those things, that's like just a microcosm of a bigger problem. Like it's just not working. And y'all, we've entered 1999 conversation with the Saints right. team. They have not lost seven games in a row since 1999. Like right. that's unheard of. And for, you know, I wrote about it. I'm sure you've talked about it. You've wrote about it, but 
the city of New Orleans just deserves better. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just one of those things where you have not seen this, this city come from Katrina, rebuild, do all these things just to have this mediocre subpar product that's out on the field. It's just not happening. And, and it's just yep. the next 24 hours. And again, when it, depending on when you're listening to us and such or watching us or anything like that, you, you either are going to make a change or you're going to stick with what you got. But if you keep what you got, you're losing that locker room. You're losing the player's respect. You're doing so much more damage if you keep him in role versus saying, well, we're just too too good for that. We don't want to fire him now. We'll just wait to the end of the year. They need something to build off of at this point, and this isn't it. Yeah, at some point you have to – the accountability has to be taken up somewhere. And and let's say that the Saints don't move on from Dennis Allen but then do trade you know, a player or two at the trade deadline. Are you, You're then going to be – misconstrued as trying to pass the buck off to the roster and not admit the issue that's going on at head coach. I asked people too to consider the fact that we're not just talking about a seven game losing streak here. We're talking about three straight now four straight playoff less games, right? For our yeah. seasons, excuse me, seasons without making it to playoffs. Now, one of those seasons was Sean Payton's final season as well. But even if you look at Dennis Allen, it will be his third straight season, third straight season without making the postseason at this point. Like yeah. there's no saving the season now no. at this point. So everything that you're doing is about building a foundation for you to be able to have as successful a future as possible. And I think that that process has to start now. It's not a process that can start in the off season. It's a process that has to start now. And, and that's the way that I look at it when it comes to the New Orleans Saints. And I'll be curious to see if that's the way that they go. Remember, we're comparing them to the standard that they have created for themselves not comparing them across or against any other teams. They, John, you just mentioned the post Katrina standard and era that they built 2005, 2021. That's the standard that this team has not lived up to. And they have said over and over again, that they have a winning culture that they have a high standard that they put that, that they hold themselves to. You have not met that standard. So what now? Yeah. I mean, practice what you preach. I mean, mm -hmm. Allen's 18 and 25 as a head coach, he's won 43% of his games in the saints with the saints. And, and, and again, Look, he's he can run a defense. He can do a lot of things. I just don't know if this is his thing. You know what I mean? Just based yeah. off of everything that's going. And lately, I don't know if he has, is doing as well defensively as he should in some aspects. Right. Like the substitution issue that led to them using a timeout, that's – inexcusable like that is right. part of the for a team that says we're looking at the details cleaning up the mistakes doing all this stuff and yada 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 that to happen third quarter you with yeah, eight man. minutes left and you're using your second timeout in the second half in a game you have to win right. it's it's just unreal of where we've come from at, at this time and, and look um you know no matter how it plays out you know uh, They've got to do something, right? And and because yeah. the trade deadline's coming. I know Marshawn's name has come up. I know that uh, Chase Young has come up. I mean, I don't know if they're going to be sellers because, you know, Marshawn's not exactly healthy right now. And right. there's probably contract issues that you got to worry about. So I don't know if it's going to be like a, a fire sale mode, but you're starting to see everything unravel because of social media. Look what Colin Saunders is doing. Carl Granderson. I mean, more people are vocal. And I mean... Uh, former players taking shots at the team. I mean, this right. is a whole big thing. Obviously, Michael Sanders brothers in his tirade. Players brothers. I mean, this is uh not a good thing. And and I'm glad you say players brothers. So uh, yeah, update everybody on Chris Olave because yeah. obviously that's that's more important in football. Obviously, he's doing well, but you know, just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, uh, you know, in case you missed it, Chris Olave took a a, a really sort of scary hit um, early on in the game. Got sandwiched between two players with. Um, with Xavier Woods going high. Xavier Woods unfortunately has a, a bit of a track record with these types of hits. Um, and uh, Chris Olave was on the field unconscious for what seemed to be multiple minutes. However, what we could say for sure is that he was uh, being tended to for several minutes. We're not sure at what point he regained consciousness in the midst of all that, but he did regain consciousness on the field. We did see him grab hands, shake hands, things like that on yeah. his way uh, yeah. being carted off the field, but he was first loaded up onto a backboard. Uh, they brought a stretcher out as well as a cart out. The stretcher was really mostly just to kind of transport the, the backboard out, uh, got him loaded up, took him off the field. He went to Atrium Health Carolinas here in, here in Charlotte, uh, which is where John and I are still are, of course. 
and um, was treated there or further evaluated there. And he uh, returned to the team and was actually in the locker room while we were at the, while we were still at the stadium, John and I, and then is traveling back home uh, with the team. By the time that he was being transported off the field, he had already had movement in all four extremities, arms and legs, uh, and was communicating. At one point he called his brother, his brother said that he was up and mobile. And then of course, at, at, by then we had also received the update that he was going to be able to make transport team transport uh, back to new Orleans. So, um, doing as well as one can uh john i maybe this is premature and maybe uh irresponsible of me to say but i'll i'll take the l if i have to but i would be <laughs> shocked if he was on the field sunday against the falcons shocked I, i'd be absolutely shocked i don't think he's gonna be I right mean, and even yeah. new orleans dot football's nick underhill i mean he he said that um he'd be shocked if if a lot of even is on the field for the rest of the season. And so, yeah. look, I mean, when you have concussion history, like this isn't just his first or second. I mean, this is his second in less than a month. And uh, that's a concern. And he was wearing the guardian cap that practices, you know, and stuff like that. And he wasn't going to wear it for the game, but now to get hit like that, like it's, that's, you got to think about long-term longevity here. And, and I mean, that stuff messes with you. I mean, you see, players who played you know back in the 90s 2000s and they had the the league you know that big old lawsuit all that stuff against the league right. because of the concussions i mean you got to think about your your future here and yeah. so uh, and then the problem is that's a big weapon to lose you don't have rashid shaheed and you don't have bub means and you're practically in this game you were down to to mason tipton mark marquez valdez gantling and cedric wilson jr who also got right. hurt and has a shoulder injury and so and jermaine jackson but and jermaine. Mm-hmm. It, it's tough um you know but again a good good update on chris lave at least in that aspect and again we'll see where he's at but um you know he might might be a candidate for IR uh, because I mean, he, at this point, there's no need for him to go put himself on the line to for a two and seventeen. Like I get, you want to be out there, yeah. and the players have said they want to play for each other, but dude, don't <laughs> like you know what I'm yeah. saying. Like at some point, like take care of yourself. Like it's bigger than football in that aspect. But yeah, um, yeah, and I think a lot of a lot of what the Saints do the rest of the season in terms of these players playing, even though they're not mathematically eliminated, John, I think it's fair to say they're realistically eliminated. And so yeah. I, oh, you know, God, you look yes. at the rest of this season should be about evaluating the talent that you have, but don't have answers about just yet. And Chris Olave is a talent that you have and have an answer about. He's your top flight wide receiver. You probably want to go and get like a bigger possession wide receiver to partner with him going into next year uh, to kind of give him that, that other uh, type of player to kind of compliment him a bit more. But I, I don't see a scenario in which you play Chris Olave at any point throughout the rest of the season and learn something new about him. Right. No. You know, you have a good wide receiver there. Just make sure he can get out on the field for you. And I think that that's gotta be the big thing. Yeah, I, I, this comment from Jonathan, I want to just highlight mm-hmm. it because thank you, first of all. Um, teams you should never duplicate, the Patriots and the Raiders. Also, this game is a perfect summary for the team, not only this season, but for four years. <laughs> I agree. Four years, yeah, four years of this. Like, I mean, this has been like torture, right? Ever since Drew left. And and look, I get it with Sean. At least they started five and two and before all the Jameis stuff yeah, happened right. and all sorts mm-hmm. of weird stuff. Like they were competitive when they were out the gate. And again, we'll never know what will have what, what could have been with Jameis that whole entire year. But he was playing well and at least got him to five and two. But you know, this this entire thing, and we've said this on past shows. Don't forget to go like and subscribe, y'all. Um, but on past shows that we were promised continuity. We were told that everything was going to operate like normal. And this team was the backbone of their identity was the defense and the offense just needed to get fixed. They made the changes in the off season. I think this offensive system can still work exceptionally well. I just think right now, the way that everything is going, the direction and the messaging is completely lost. I, I just don't yeah. think it's it's there. It's it's all discombobulated. And again, that points to the guy that's in charge running your team. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 look, I'll say something I don't I don't know that many people have, have been critical of so far, but I think that the wide zone system is the right system. But I, I have my doubts right now about Clint Kubiak as a play caller. Sure. Um not not because 
the system doesn't support the talent. I think the Saints now have the system that supports the talent. And Clint Kubiak did a very good job bringing in and installing that system. For me, it's the sequencing. It's the same issue that he had in Minnesota, uh, to where you know plays don't necessarily build on one another. Things are kind of happening, sort of uh, you know, out of sequence of uh, of one another. Things don't feel like you're building momentum. Um, the decision making in terms of you know if you've got a fourth and four, maybe it's worth having two routes that go just beyond the sticks as opposed to a situation to where you either are going to the option route over the middle or you're going downfield to a one-on-one. It feels like there are other options there than that. But uh, so I I have my, I have my, my magnifying glass, I guess, or my microscope out uh, when it comes to kind of where Clint Kubiak is as well, just as a play caller. And this was, like I said, that Clint Kubiak was one of my top, options at offensive coordinator along with uh, Zach Robinson who ended up in Atlanta but my big thing about Clint Kubiak was did he learn how to sequence because he did not do that well in Minnesota I still have my concerns and my doubts about that so far from what we've seen uh, at least recently from his play calling habit so I'll be curious to see how that straightens up and of course what that would look like with a healthy team I'll give him that but uh, I mean either way the number of players that you have on the field is the same. (laughs) And so you're calling the same plays and they talk all the time about how, regardless of injuries, they don't see any drop off. They claim to not see any drop off and they claim that they're not um, uh, closing up or tightening up the playbook. And we've seen over and over again, it hasn't felt like the playbook was open today. I thought it was a little bit more open than we've seen it in the past, but uh, man, it just, uh, I think that there's still things to be, to be worked out when, when it comes to all that. And if the saints do make a head coaching change, making a head coaching change towards a head coach, who's an offensive play caller might not be a bad idea. Yeah. And look, when you're two and seven, everything is under a microscope and under a fine tooth mm-hmm. comb. And look, of course, I, I think they've gone away from some things. I, why are you not attacking the middle field as much? And when you did attack the middle field with Juwan and stuff like that, it worked. And so that's why mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, especially in that fourth and four, why are you throwing a 50 50 ball? Like you could have done so many different things there instead of that play call. I just don't think that's, that's the ideal look and why are you running that route? Like just so many things, um, plenty more to talk about on this matchup. Thank you for sticking with us. We're going to have a quick little break, but we will be right back because we got a lot more to talk about y'all. At Kroger pharmacy care is making it easy to get vaccinated. Care is helping you stay protected from flu, COVID, and RSV. Seasonal vaccines are available seven days a week with evening hours. Care is giving you a shot at staying healthy this season. Walk in whenever is best and get multiple vaccines in one visit at your local Kroger Pharmacy. So come and get the protection you need while protecting those around you. Kroger Health, a world of care is in store. Visit Kroger.com slash vaccines for more. Restrictions and exclusions apply. See site for details. Hey folks, John Hendricks here, Second and Saints, wanted to talk to you quickly about Underdog because it is the place to play if you're a sports fan looking to win money while watching sports. With over 5 million happy players and $2 billion won, Underdog makes it fun and easy to cash in on all your favorite athletes' performances. Compete against other players by just selecting higher or lower on two or more player stats, and you could win up to a thousand times your money. So turn every touchdown into a win with Underdog. This season, Underdog is going to be running a special promo or bonus bonus almost every single day like profit boosts discounts or free picks plus all new users get a free pick you could win up to a thousand times your money just by choosing higher or lower on player stats like passing yards interceptions touchdowns and much more create entries with all football selections or mix and match across your favorite sports underdog puts the power to cash out in your hands now you can either keep riding with your entry or tap the win now button to cash out whenever you want and with underdog rescues you can get your money back and receive a promo if an early injury causes your entry to lose with underdogs double flex option you can even take two l's and still have your entry to be a win so go download the app today and use code second saints to get up to a thousand dollars in bonus cash instantly that's code second saints now here comes the legal jargon must be 18 or older 19 and older in alabama nebraska 19 and older in colorado for some games 21 and older in massachusetts and arizona and present in the state where underdog fantasy operates terms apply void in colorado concerned with your play call 800 gambler or visit www.ncpgambling.org arizona 1-800 next step 1-800-639-8783 or text next step to 533-42 new york call the 24 7 hope line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny 467 back here on second and saints alongside ross jackson um you know look i i don't know how many other directions we can go with with what we saw i mean it's um you know 
the big plays continue to have like it's just been a theme it's a common theme of what keeps happening at the inopportune time and look i I think when it boils down to it i i think i'm a little bit more disappointed in the way the defense has played and and look i know i saw cam's emotion afterwards if you haven't seen that video you know Mm -hmm. basically having to be consoled after the loss not wanting to go directly in the locker room like and i've said this like he doesn't deserve to go out a loser like Mm-mm. people, players like him, Tyron, Alvin, and, and Demario, they like they've gotten comfortable with being losers, and that's not okay by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, these are guys who chose to stay with this team or have chosen to be with this team. Like Tyron, even talking about it has been his dream to play for the Saints because right. he's a hometown yep. guy, and he's baffled by how this has gone. And and look, I'm gonna tell you, you saw Alvin's comments shout out to nof for posting the uh interview and stuff but he's talking about the players and then his end of the comment kind of talking about no confidence in the coaches now he didn't say Mm -hmm. coaches but no confidence elsewhere is that what you picked up from him yeah i mean i it's what i gleaned from that for sure um and and i think for sure that like that makes sense i don't know i mean how could you at this point have that confidence. You know what I mean? Like you've, you can have the confidence in terms of, you could have held the confidence saying like, okay, well just got to lead us the right way, lead us the right way, lead us the right way. But then if the, if, if the result is the same over and over and over again, um, uh, Dennis Allen said something about being on the negative end, um, is tough when he said that he was like hurting for the city, hurting for the organization, hurting for the players and stuff like that. Being on the negative end is, is, is that's, that's carrying a lot of weight, my guy. Like sure. it's a seven game losing streak on a team that started off. And like, I think this makes it so much worse is a seven game losing streak starting off with a team that was off to a historic start through the first two games. And I think that's the other thing that makes this seven game losing streak feel even more weighty. And then to cap off that seven game losing streak up against make no mistake about it. The worst team in the NFL, um, the one in seven going into this matchup, um, Carolina Panthers, like, yeah, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense that your confidence would waver uh, at the very least in the the setup that you have around you and the leadership that you have above you. Yeah, and, and it, it's it, – the more they play, the first two wins were fool's gold. I mean, you beat the worst yeah. team in the league. You beat one of the other worst teams in the league, and I yep. think it showed the possibilities off. But, you know, now since then, it, it, again, you had two close games after that. And then the other ones you lost, and I get it, injuries are a part of the game, but stop saying the injuries are the reasons you're losing because it's not the injuries that you're the reason you're losing these games. It's not. You have depth here. This is what you're supposed to do, develop these guys. I mean, you're you're basically saying that the roster is inept if you don't have your players in there, right? Like I'm right. just saying that because, uh, you know, again, and you talked about the offense, the usage, it's like, why is Dallin Holker on this team? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he ran to rave an undrafted rookie that makes the team. He's he hasn't seen targets or anything. I know he's doing some dirty work, all this other stuff, but you know, him, Mason Tipton, like they're barely getting involved in stuff. And these are guys that were showing out in training camp. And, and again, they got to get their reps. They got to get something, you know, going. And, and I'm speaking specifically on offense right now, but defensively, mm-hmm. it's kind of like a familiar cast of characters. I mean, there's guys in there that have been there and, you know, it's just a, a hard little product to watch, watch every single week. Like it, it's, it's literally become kind of the most dreaded three hours of, of a, a week, right? Like it mm. just has, and it's not going to get any better right now. Like, I don't think even magically, like, even if they were to move on from DA, I think that they could play better against Atlanta. I don't know if that would necessarily mean that they would win against Atlanta, but the chances of them going eight and one, that's what there are like the two and seven, nine, they need to go seven and one, right? Is that what they need? The two and seven, yes. so nine, 17 yeah. games. Uh, so yeah, that's not happening. Like they, right. they might can get at best seven and 10. That's probably the best I think they could do to finish out this year. But even if they do that and Allen's still the head coach, you can't sell this, this fan base on bringing him back because you have mm-hmm. failed again to do the things you said you were going to do and the things that you said you were going to clean up this last off season. Like it just doesn't fly anymore. And saints fans are smarter than that. 
Right. Yeah, absolutely. And like, you're already hearing all the conversation around Saints fans no longer wanting to go to games and all this stuff. Oh, I haven't yeah. heard Saints fans. I didn't hear heard Saints fans talk about that in a lot. They had a historically bad defense, 2014, 2015, 2016, <sighs> oh, and the dome was packed every yeah. single weekend and everything. It was no conversation about how the team was, you know, that the team was going to, uh, or, or excuse me, that fans weren't going to show up to games and stuff like that. Like you thought last year was bad with the Detroit game and, and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And like the dome being filled and all that kind of stuff. I mean, just wait for the rest of the season because I think you're going to see a lot more of that. Yeah. And so I, I think that's something that the saints have to be aware of. Like this is a business. You have to put out a product in a business that is going to make your business business. And if you're not doing that, your business ain't business in no more. And so like, that's the big thing that the saints are also up against here this is it this can't just be about sentimental loyalty or anything like that Mm -hmm. to your friends or people who have been a part of the organization for a long time dennis allen will find a job he's going to be a great defensive coordinator all over again he's going (laughs) to land somewhere where he's going to be able to do that probably denver uh and everything like that's all gonna that's all gonna come together but you can't you can't be sentimental and loyal uh, in, in a business like this, you're going to fail if you do that. And, and so the saints have got to get that figured out because, uh, uh you can't, you're not going to be able to sell this for another season. There's no way you're going to be able to sell it for another season. And, yeah. um, the saints, yeah, they, they got to make changes, man. Yeah. You're setting a precedence. Like you're saying, it's okay. We're going right. to just keep losing. And then what does that say about free agents you want to attract or anything like right. that? Like, it just doesn't. And in the likelihood that you're going to get players to resign here, no, they've seen what's what's here and the same guys in charge next year. Why would I want to stay here? You know what I mean? Like I could go somewhere right. else and even take less money and be happy. You know what I mean? As long as I don't have to put up with this. And so I, I don't know. And, and again, you know, you talked about uh, the product on the field, all these other things. You know, I, I had a friend tell me that they sold uh their all their rest of their tickets for the rest of the year and then somebody Jeez. canceled their trip up to new york because if they're not spending money on this team to go watch them play the giants and all this other stuff so it's a ripple effect it is going to hurt and, and i'm telling you the way the falcons are playing i don't know if the falcons have the travel fan base but i envision a scenario and i've been saying this that if if they don't fire da and they keep him for the falcons game and then they lose to the falcons and then the falcons fans take over the superdome like that's the ultimate slap in the face to me. Man. Like, I mean, I just like you say, oh, well, we're not ready yet. And I, if you do that and your bottom line is going to hurt, I just don't see how you can continue to justify and stand behind somebody and maybe hoping that that this is going to change. And again, I told you on this pod, too, that I think that they believe they're the two and O team, not the two and six team. That was my comments last. And I still feel like that the way the organizations run is like, well, no, we're actually the two and O team. We've just been hit with X, Y and Z. But at Mm -hmm. some point, you got to face the music. You're just not getting there. And at this point, you're not going to get there. You're going to end up with some top 10 pick maybe at this point or they're going to do just just well enough to get like 14 or 13 or something like that. But, uh, you know, change has got to happen, uh, whether you call it retool, rebuild, re-image, I don't care, re-whatever you want, repurpose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it, they, that can't be, you know what I mean? Like, you're just not going to get to that point and, and you're not going to win enough games to put yourself back in the conversation yeah. at this point. I think it was Colin Saunders who on Twitter was saying, like, at this point, the goal is to finish above 500. That's Whoa, sad, man. Like Super that's Bowl stinks. champion saying that, right? Yeah, right. Multi time and like, and then to 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 go from where this team was the first two weeks, which was amongst the conversation of the best teams in the NFL, to now your players saying, "Well, oh, man, I sure hope we can go nine and eight, <laughs> you know, or I sure hope we can go, or we can finish better than five hundred, which is their only chance to finish better than five hundred. <laughs> really, is either win out." Or win seven of of the next eight, and and honest, I'll be honest with you, I don't think either of those things are happening. Mm-hmm. I'll be shocked if the Saints get to seven wins at this point, um, uh, unless they get the boost from you know a coaching change or something like that. But that boost usually only lasts a game or two, sure. and stuff. So it's just it it's really tough to kind of justify like where this team is, and and to an extent, it's it's almost kind of hard to. I mean, it's not fully true. I was going to say, it's kind of hard to justify the fact that the Saints are in this situation in the first place, that like changes weren't made before now. 
Uh, but uh, it matches the typical timeline, right? Dennis Allen didn't get quote his quarterback until last year with um, with um, uh, uh, with Derek, Derek Carr, Carr no. joining the team. Yeah, <laughs> and so you needed to get my bad. And so you needed to get two. You know, you usually typically get two years with your quarterback. This is going to be that second mm-hmm. year. All those other things. So I, I guess you could you, you could argue that, but I don't know. It just it it's it's astounding that this team has gotten to this point at all. Um, that we're even having conversations like this because it's just so unusual. It's just so unusual for this uh, for this organization to see them kind of at this point. Yeah, and, and the thing is, um, you know, I feel for these players, man. We we're in the locker room. Oh, yeah. like, these players are good good people, and and again, like they they're tight knit group. Like again, I, I just think that the rift now is players and coaches, right? Like I, I just think that these players believe that they're going to play for each other which is a brotherhood all these types of things and and again there's a lot of good solid dudes in that locker room like there's just too many to name that are just like just great with us and just great personalities all this other stuff and again that doesn't have anything to do with winning losing you know what i'm saying but just a testament of where you know this team is really put together well in a lot of ways except for some of the areas where it kind of matters right now and so Mm -hmm. It's just struggle bus. And, um, you know, somebody asked the question, what would, uh, you know, who would take over if DA got fired? We've talked about this plenty. Oh, yeah. We would think it's Darren Rizzi. That would be our yeah. interim pick. Um, and I don't think anybody else would. But, you know, first it would have to happen. That would be the thing. Yeah. And then, you know, second they would figure that out. But, um, you know, it's, it's crazy. I mean, Ross, it's just like even if you – like, what does this look like? Let's just walk down this path. Okay, sure. let's say you do you do the unthinkable that most people don't believe is going to happen. Let's say tomorrow they move on from DA. It's going to be week 10. You got to buy in week 13, I think it is, because you got two more mm-hmm. games. You got uh, Atlanta and then Cleveland. You got to buy. Then you got the Rams. So you do have like a little bit of a homestand here. Um, but – play it out like I, they can't probably get back in the playoff mix but no what does that do what could that potentially set up for the off season um what would it mean for maybe some of these free agents like i think it'd be a little bit easier for a paulson and evo to come back or a chase young mm-hmm. to come back but if they made coaching changes maybe i i, I don't know but what's your take yeah. yeah that's where that's where things get really challenging is you make the coaching changes then it's really going to come down to how many of those outgoing players fit the mold of the new coach once the new coach comes in. So that one would be tough, but here's what I will say in terms of what the near future would look like through the rest of the season. What I imagine would be happen is that they would move on from Dennis Allen. Darren Rizzi would become the interim head coach, as we mentioned. Uh, Joe Woods then becomes your de facto um, yeah. uh, defensive play caller, right? He's already your defensive coordinator. He just assumes the defensive play caller role. Uh, I think it would be smart to take Michael Hodges and give him something in there. Uh, because he's somebody you want on your staff moving forward, I would think. Um, and then after that, I think you're also willing to take phone calls when it comes to the trade deadline on Tuesday. I think you got to be listening at this point. It doesn't mean you have to call other teams and actively shop. Hey, looking at moving this player, what would you give for yeah. yada yada? But if a team calls, you answer the phone, you listen. And if you can, if you can, you know, build up some type of a bidding war between the Kansas City Chiefs the New York Jets, the Baltimore Ravens, and whomever for a Marshawn Lattimore, for instance, that's the type of move you have to make right now because, and again, we got to let go of the sentimental at this point, right? I get it. Great draft pick, 2017 defensive rookie of the year. I understand. But saves you at least $16 million against a salary cap next year where you're already $62 million over if you trade him this year. Um, you don't have to assume any diff- any additional cap space. He's almost 30 years old. Like There's a lot of different things that you're looking at here that make him movable. And so if you do that, depending upon what his health looks like with the hamstring injury and everything like that, I think that's something that helps you twofold when it comes to starting to prepare that foundation that we were talking about before for your future. So I'd say that that's a thing. You and I have talked about some other players, Willie Gay Jr., maybe Isaiah Foskey in the conversation, guys that would end up getting you back like a day three pick or whatever, um, and start to just build that draft capital that you can have to either, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 
uh, package together to mobilize in the draft or to throw spaghetti at the wall and take as many selections as you can so yeah. that you can do that. And then, and just to be clear, I don't think that the 2025 draft makes the New Orleans Saints a better team in 2025. It just helps them get started with building their new foundation for their next era. That that Those are the things that I would say that the Saints have to get done uh, as they move forward. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about it. When you say rebuild, you're looking at probably a three-year window maybe. Like if you yeah. get some yeah. success off the bat, like that's just line up. Like I think about the Texans and such, like they they rebuilt a good bit of theirs and they had some pretty good success there. Uh, but – Again, uh, you know, it's it depends if this team would embrace it. I, I do like this this question. I'm going to bring this up because we have is trusting Loomis to handle a rebuild. Um, I will say this. I know that he has said before uh, that he wouldn't be opposed to doing a rebuild. It just depends if he wants to do a rebuild. Right. And I think that's the biggest thing here. And again, the draft, like. I think they've hit on some good players. I just think that the bad has outweighed some of the good for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you're looking at Kendra Miller. You're looking at Isaiah Foskey as a pick right now. I mean, you look at Peyton Turner in the past. I mean, there's just so many to go on. But I, I, I like this. Yeah, Davenport, huge. I like this draft class. I like what they've done with Talia Seifuanga. I like Kool-Aid McKinstry. I mean, these soft tissue injuries, they got to go, man. Like, you gotta. that's another thing that you got to look at. And I mean, it's – probably unreal to oh, good point. impossible to fix that now, even though they say they're going to take steps to fix it this week. We'll see. But I mean, that's another thing that you have to look at and put on on the table. But I, I think that could he handle a rebuild? Yes. Now how he handles a rebuild? I don't know, because that's probably going to look completely different than what everybody else wants to, because this is a team that does believe from building the trenches from the trenches within um, and so you get a top five pick. It might be a trench guy. I don't know if you're going to get the shiny new toy quarterback if you want it there, because in a lot of ways, I think Derek Carr might be back as the quarterback, regardless if Allen is here or not. Yeah, I think that's very possible just contractually. And also he's got a no trade clause. He's not somebody you're going to move like stuff like that. And so, um, I mean, I guess there's a world in which he says, you know, yeah, send me somewhere where I can, you know, compete or something like that or whatever. Like, I yeah. guess there's a world in which that happens, but I don't know who wants to take his contract on in that process to be a guy that comes in and competes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, anyway, I, I, and, and the other thing too is I'm not sure the 2025 draft class is the draft class to go for a quarterback in the first round. Right. Like it's going to be an Correct. okay quarterback draft class. I know everybody's excited about Shador Sanders and things like that, yeah. but I don't know if he translates to the NFL. Cam Ward uh, looks great in, in, in Miami, but I don't know if the Saints have the system for him. And then the other piece of it too is, is this, you know, in terms of, in terms of trust, is this also the regime that you trust to handle developing a young quarterback? We don't know yet. Right. And so I think that it depends upon what happens when it comes down to his, you know, when it comes down to how the quarterback or how the head coach change happens and stuff like that, because you might end up with a head coach that wants a traditional pocket passer. Okay. Well then that rules out some of these guys. You might have a head coach that uh, wants to go with a veteran as opposed to a rookie. And so as an interest like you just don't know like we have no idea what that would actually look like by the time that they roll into the 2025 draft class and so i think the other option that you have is um how do you build the fastest car possible before you land on your final driver right and so adding pieces to the rest of the offense adding pieces to the defense those things could be something that makes sense even though you don't go for the quarterback it's tempting to say oh well they're in the top three top five so you have to go for the quarterback or we assume they're going to go for the quarterback but that's not what you necessarily have have yeah, to do right. yeah not in 2025 I yeah I, I don't think so either i think there's a way and even so you can get stopgap quarterback there's all sorts of things that mm -hmm. way you could do or bridge quarterback whatever you want to call it you know what i'm saying like there's other ways you can do it but again uh, one of the other things we didn't even talk about when it comes to which is the the bill on ryan ramchett like i'm right. pretty sure this guy's never playing football again He's going to have to retire. I'm sure that money's going to have to come off the books too. And that's obviously a, a, a big concern too. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to open up this can of worms too here. Uh, I mean, if you're the owner of this team, Gail Benson, what is your, what are you thinking at this moment? Right? Like, I, I guess that's my thing is it's like, I know Loomis handles most all the operational stuff, right? Like he's the guy that's really a lot in charge, but I, again, as an owner, you know, you've seen owners 
voice their support, all these other things. But what's kind of your take on that? I mean, I know it's hard to read in some aspects. I know she's around a lot of times and such, but thoughts here. Yeah. I mean, I think at some point you got to be worried about your business, right? Like we were talking about that earlier it was like, you, you have to be worried about that at some point. And so the loyalty, the sentimental relationships, all those other things, like sometimes that stuff's got to be put aside and everything. And, and I get it. Like I, we oftentimes, oftentimes it is forgotten rather that in football, there are human beings, real life sure. humans, real life jobs who have real life families that they have to real life provide for to keep them real life safe. Like all those other things, like there's yeah. real life that happens in football, but at the same, and also at the same time, that real life that's out there has to be feeding back into the machine, right? You have to be doing the things that are good for the business. So the business can be good for you right now. The Saints have a lot of people in the building who are either making decisions that are not good for the business or are part of the decisions that are not good for the business. And therefore the business will eventually not feed them anymore. And so that has to be the way to me, like if you're Gail Benson, you've got to be considering how is the business? What do I have to do to protect the bottom line here, which is have a football team that sells tickets, have a football team that wins games. Right now, you don't necessarily have the football team that wins games. You have a football team that already sold the tickets, so you're lucky there, but you have a football team right now that might not sell them in the future unless you do something, and it's the something that's got to be the bigger part of that that equation. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it just comes down to pride. You know what I'm saying? Like, Sure. This, yeah. This has been a winning franchise. Like when you had Drew, I mean, you did all this pomp and circumstance for Drew and put him in the ring this year and all this other stuff. Like, I mean, it's just they they know that this isn't how it should go. Like, you know yeah. that two and seven, it never got that bad under Sean Payton. Like, I mean, oh and four, right? Okay, but they crawled themselves out of that hole. They could at least get back to five hundred. Here, it's just it. Can they even win a game at this point? And they have proven right. that they can't win a game. Like, I, I just find it, it – and there's got to be like a 30 for 30 or a study done. I have never seen a team lose so many games in so many new ways. Like, uh, that stat of – what was it? 150 rushing yards and uh, oh, yeah. turnover and all this other stuff. The teams are 275 and 0, and now it's 275 and 1 because of the Saints. Yep. Like, yep. come on, it's just a laughing stock at this point. Like, it, all the, and I think I even told you this the other week is like something I was working on is, is all these streaks under Dennis Allen that have just vanished. Like, all the work Sean Payton and Drew Brees did have been slowly just sent to the crapper because of TA. And I know it's probably not all his fault, but it's just a coincidence that it's going to fall lot back on him. Fallen. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's going to fall back on him. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, I, I think that was the other thing we were talking about earlier was like you you have this gold standard that that was set by the previous regime and you've spoken. Remember, the first season was all about continuity, right? Carrying over the high standard. Mm -hmm. uh, then the second season was all about, you know, okay, making some changes, giving DA his defensive staff, go out and get the quarterback that he wants. Did that, they yeah. lost games um, or didn't win enough. Uh, and then this year, you make a full change over on the offensive side. You bring in the offensive system that you want. All wise moves, not winning games and stuff. And so, yeah. like, at some point, you have to look at this and you have to say, like, okay, well, there was a standard here. The standard's not happening anymore. What? Where? Where is? Where in the process has things happened? You know, have things gone sideways? And you have to look at what was and what is. And to your point, yeah. what is is costing you what once was. Exactly. I mean, you are what your record says. You're two and seven right. and you're about to get experiences in the Superdome. They're going to resemble a two and 17. Like it, it's just going to happen. And I'm going through the schedule. It's like you might be able to beat the Browns. You might be able to beat the Giants. You maybe. I mean, at this point, I just don't know. I mean, if, if nothing changes, then I think this product is going to still finished the way it is and again i think that they can rally because of the way they play for themselves and maybe get to seven and ten when it's all said and done but that's just being on like the very optimistic side real sticky maybe it's five and twelve this year but no matter how, where you put it and how you slice it you're still out of the playoffs for another year and that would make four straight years they're out of the playoffs mm -hmm. like yep, I four mean, straight seasons 
how is that okay? It's just not okay. And and right. again, you gotta have higher standards than that. If he's not cutting the mustard, find somebody who's gonna come in here, get a different direction, get somebody who is a Sean Payton, who's a who is a I almost made this, this little bit explicit, but who's a, a kind of an a hole, if you will. Like I mean, he ran <laughs> the things the way he wanted to. You know, I, I had to stop myself there because I was about to let it loose and like, all right, let's not mess up our rating on here and stuff. But, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just got to get somebody who can reinvigorate this team. You know what I mean? Put life in this team because right now it's all sucked out. Yeah, yeah, man. It's it's tough to stay. It's tough to not be deflated in this situation. All right, I'm going to ask you the question that that we were talking about before we started recording because I'm 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 curious now that sure. we've had this conversation. Um, obviously, this conversation or this question is tough to ask in reality because we don't know who the head coach is, what sure. it looks like next year, all those other things. So we have to keep that in mind. But John, let's say the New Orleans Saints finish with a top three selection. If you are making the selection in the NFL draft in the top three. Who or what doesn't have to necessarily be a, a player, but like, what do you think is the best course of action in terms of going after a quarterback, uh, a player on the offensive side, a player on the defensive side? Like, where do you start uh, when it comes to a top three draft selection? Yeah, I mean, just playing this out, right? Like, I mean, you look at the offensive line. I, again, I said they believe in building with the trenches, and and mm-hmm. so I think that's probably where they would look, right? And as far as the offensive line goes, I mean, you're going to have Eric Caesar. Um, you know, you see what you have in Trevor Penning and Talia Sefuanga. Do you spend that on a, a interior offensive lineman to get you a left guard? I, I, I don't think I'd go that route. I think they mm-hmm. got to get a pass rusher. Because Cam's older, mm-hmm. you're not using him. You might lose Chase Young. Peyton Turner's out of the equation after this year. You're not getting what you need out of uh, uh, Isaiah Foskey. Tano's a free agent. I, I'm going to try to find somebody who can disrupt the quarterback and be a game changer. And I don't know if that player is in the top three, but I'm sure as hell going to try to find somebody who can be sure. disruptive on a consistent basis. And then that you can have for the next four years with a fifth year option. I just think the pass rushers in today's league, I mean, look, look what Aiden Hutchinson does for the lions. And of course he's out yep. for the year. Look at all these players who just make a big difference with the pass rush. I mean, that's kind of where I lean, you know, I just don't think the quarterback is, is there just yet. And just cause I agree with you in this assessment that, you know, we're not there. Are you going to spend it on a wide receiver? I, I don't think so there either. I, for me, it's gotta be somewhere on the, the defensive line. It's gotta be a pass rusher. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see that. I don't know if there's an edge rusher that is top five, top yeah, three, top either. 10 worthy in this class i think maybe the 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 top one that a lot of people talk about is like nick scorton uh probably mm-hmm. out of a and m but he's typically like an outside the top 10 guy there's a lot of defensive interior players that mm-hmm. for whatever reason this year are all in the top top five but i uh, struggle with the idea of drafting somebody that kind of like you say i'm the same with you on a guard like a uh, interior offensive line you don't draft that early to me interior defensive line you don't draft early I do think you go wide receiver because that's where th- those are the best players in this class. Those are the best players in this class right now. Travis Hunter out of Colorado and an, uh, Ted Aroa McMillan out of Arizona. Either one of those guys, the top three, that's probably what I'm taking. I don't like the quarterback mm-hmm. class. Especially, I don't like the, tw- sorry, let me rephrase that. I don't like the quarterback class in terms of a top three draft pick. Love the quarterback class class for a top three draft pick in the second round. Love the quarterback class for like a Drew Aller out of Penn State in the fifth round or fourth round. Love all that. Not a fan of taking any of these quarterbacks in the the top three. Uh, But uh, give me somebody that can be a game breaker so that no matter what quarterback I have in, I can get the ball in that player's hands and then watch him go out there and do something with it, Travis Hunter, or somebody that is just bigger and better than the guy on the opposite side of him, Ted Aurora McMillan. I'm perfectly okay with drafting either one of those guys to give whomever uh, is throwing the football an opportunity to be able to actually have plays made. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, everybody's going to have an opinion on this for sure. And, and I just, again, we're assuming they get a top three pick and then what, you know, would they trade out of it? Would they trade up? Like there's That's so the many thing, different variables trade out of it. here. You Good could, point. because I mean, if you force it under this regime's belief, 
they would go best player available. You know, they don't go based off of needs necessarily. They go based mm -hmm. off of best player available. And so I don't know. I, I just don't see some of these. And, and again, you know, defense has kind of been a little bit sus and uh, obviously they're a little bit older too. That's why another reason why I kind of lean that and I just can't justify an off interior offensive guy, I, a wide receiver, a possession guy. Cause you miss a Mike Thomas. Like if they had peaked Michael Thomas in this offense right now, and there was no rip between him and Derek Carr, I mean, and he wasn't hurt or anything like, I, I is there a rip be between him and Derek Carr? No, I, you know, I read something about it. I don't know. It was like on the internet or something like that. But yeah. Crazy. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. And and that's what I like about the Arizona wideout, Tedora McMillan, is that like he is that guy, six foot four. Mm -hmm. He's he's listed at six foot five. So he's probably going to actually measure it at like six foot three, six foot four. But, you know, over 200 pounds, six foot three, six foot four. He's not like the most agile dude with the ball in his hands and everything has like one of the slowest spin moves I've ever seen in my life. But he is a dude that doesn't need that either, right? Just like Mike was. Mike was a guy that didn't need to be able mm -hmm. to be faster than you, quicker than you. Uh, he was bigger and better and stronger than you. And that's who, yep. who Tedaro McMillan uh, shakes out to be so far. Uh, in terms of what we've seen from him, but that's a guy that I think. And and look, here's the other thing too. You think about all the positions across the NFL. Which which position translates most cleanly to the NFL? One of them is wide receiver, without a doubt. And so that's another thing is don't spend that top three draft pick on a non need high bust potential position. Go and get the sure thing that you know is going to translate. I think that's another thing, too, about being wise around positional value when it comes to these early picks. Yeah, and I, I like the concept of Keith Williams working with a young receiver, too. Yeah, for that's sure. Near. Like That's why I'm, I'm like, if, if Diego's, and even if they put an offensive guy in here, whatever, it doesn't matter. I, I do like the elements of this offensive coaching staff. I think there's obviously a lot of 100%. things that need to be much better and attention to detail, all this stuff, but – I, I like the fact that they were one voice, all this other stuff. It's just the execution mm -hmm. has been majorly lacking, especially over these last seven games that they've lost. You know what I mean? You can just pick your, your spot where it's just not been good. But, you know, look, it's uh, it's really weird times for Saints fans. And for us that cover the team, it's – uh, I said – and wrote this and said it's kind of like unfamiliar uncharted territory but it's also familiar territory if that makes sense like, mm, mm -hmm. it's just it's just crazy to be in this boat again after yeah. such high hopes for this team and you know again I, I nobody's gonna pick them to to run the table or do anything like that i mean this is practically your season's over again i know mathematically they can still be in it they can say all the things but it's a lost season, y'all. It's it's nine games in, and you're you have to put together an incredible run just to get to nine and eight. You know what I mean? Like you're not gonna win eight straight games. You know what I mean? You're just yeah. you're not like not this team, yeah. not with everything that's in charge and everything that's going on. You're not. Yeah. And if they do, I'll be the first one to buy incredible. somebody one of our subscribers a, a playoff ticket. Like it's just not Easy. happening. Like I get to even yeah. offer season tickets and it's still not going to happen, you know? What right. I mean? Right. So it's just, uh, yeah. 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 I think well, that's, I think that's absolutely right. And, and, and I'll, my last word here too is, is about the players. You know, you mentioned that you feel bad about the players. Mm -hmm. I do too. And they're going to go out there and they're going to play for the rest of the season. Yeah. They're going to go out there. They're going to do their thing. They're going to do what they can with the leadership that they have, whatever it is. Um, yep. Because not only are they playing, for themselves, but the families, all the real life stuff we yeah. talked about, uh, and they're playing as an audition for 31 other teams. Cause I think there's sure. a lot of players on this roster that won't be back here next year, whether upon okay. their own volition or whether because the coaching staff has changed over. And so you're building to the new coaching staff. Like there's a lot of ripple effects that come yeah. from all of it. And so I think that a lot of players are going to be working very hard to do the right thing to set themselves up in the future. The issue though is that what that ends up happening is that you're going to get some players that are going to be playing for their individual benefits, which is going to limit the amount of ability that you're going to have as a team. And I think that's one of the things that you always, always see about teams that get into these situations. It's why sometimes you don't see a team necessarily lose the locker room, but you're not seeing the homogenous play and the complimentary play on the field is because everybody's kind of at this point having to try to put their best stuff on tape. 
That's what they have yeah. to really focus on doing at this point. And that's what they should be focused on because they have a future to be concerned about. Uh, but sometimes that ends up creating some complications in terms of your ability to be able to mesh as a team on the field. So that would just be one thing that I would watch for. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think, you know, the, the players are going to go out there. They're going to do everything that they can to, to put their best foot forward. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's just how it's going to be. And so, um, yeah, I don't know what else you can say about this game. Like, it was just, um, I don't know. I think it's been the lowest point for a Saints fan in, golly, forever. 20 years? What maybe? was it? I don't know. What was it Colin years? called it? The, the, the Cottonelle doo-doo bowl. Doo-doo bowl. <laughs> That was crazy. <laughs> that was the wildest thing. I didn't oh, know. Like, you, you could give me a whole oh, list bank. of you can give me a whole list of like fake college bowl games. And you could have said to me, hey Ross, from this list of five, 15, 20, I don't care how many you gave me, one of the Saints players is gonna tweet about one of these things being the bowl game that they just played in as a New Orleans say, and Doodle Bowl would have been last. I don't care how many you gave me. Doodle Bowl would have been third out of three, th- 30 out of 30, 300 out of 300. I'd have been like, ain't no way. Somebody's going to tweet yeah. about playing at a Doodle Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Colin to said, watch trying this. To, trying to bring some <laughs> comedy to the table. He said, yeah, I'm here to bring you comedy, really comedic relief. Yeah, exactly. What a dude. Oh, man. Yeah, what a dude. What a team. What a year. Um, well, Ross, I, I think that's going to probably wrap us up for tonight. You know, guys, I, I'm surprised this many people are actually tuning into us, almost a thousand of y'all, like crazy, especially Dang. now. Sunday night game must not Thank be that you. good. I guess. <laughs> 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 Thank you all for the support. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So um, we may be back here uh, in, in less than 24 hours, depending on what happens. And look, I think even if something doesn't happen and they keep doing everything, like I think that still warrants maybe just a, a quick little thing from us and yeah. such. But, um, you know, Ross, I, as always, give you a chance. What's coming up on LouisianaSports.net and Locked On? I'm sure of nothing. Nothing. No, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, look, <laughs> broke, broke down, taking a look at a whole bunch of stuff in the future. Uh, I'm going to do another episode for Monday that's going to be breaking down to take a look at what the Saints need to keep intact because, believe it or not, there are some things that I believe yeah. they need to keep intact, namely Alante Taylor. Like, there are still players on this roster that I think you are you can build a future around. So yes. uh, when it comes to all this attrition and everything and fire sale conversation and stuff like that, I think it's equally important to look at what's working Worth keeping in house, and I think that there are a few of those players. So, I want to dive into that, take a look at the numbers behind the loss, uh, and then dive into um, some more. You know, just getting ready. I mean, looking at looking at what the future for this team uh, holds and uh, and looks like. So, various versions of that between Locked On Saints and Louisiana Sports.net, which you got coming up over at Saints News Network. I mean, it's the trade deadline. I mean, if you guys haven't checked trade out yeah, si.com sure. slash NFL slash Saints, I put up two really. Uh, critical pieces when it comes to the the post game stuff one on the state of the team and the other one on how this is negatively impacts the fans right and so uh, Mm -hmm. i would highly encourage you guys to go check that out and i mean it's just reality where it's at i mean there's no hiding behind anything now there is no more excuses you've used that up you struck out like this is over right you know what i'm saying and so whether they come to terms with it and do anything and act on it we're gonna find out but you know, a lot more to, to break down here. Um, I, we got stuff on the, the car comments and Thomas stuff, right. all that riff. Like, there's just so much stuff going on with this team. Uh, for a 2-7 and seven team, they got so much stuff going on. But, you know, look, uh, guys, we really appreciate all you guys tuning in. Again, cannot thank you guys enough for the support. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe. We really do uh, love our fans. And, and, look, we'll just continue to be here come hell or high water. Like, we got – However many games left, <laughs> I'm losing track. Nine. Eight games no, left. Eight. eight. And look, eight. we'll get the fun stuff too because we're going to have the Senior Bowl. We got the draft. That's we're right. going to have plenty of mock drafts. And if yeah. you didn't see our coverage last year, we gave you tons of draft nuggets yeah, that and, was fun. and all that combine. Yeah, we had some bangers on, on our show. <laughs> so, like, again, y'all, y'all find again. But, um, yeah, guys, just sleep on it. Um, <laughs> how's that going to do? <laughs> I'm I'm trying to like how do you say how do you tell somebody it's okay to have salt in the wound without you know saying here comes the salt I don't know it's just 
Yeah, there is no like nice way of putting it. Like it just sucks. no, it's a thing. Like none of it, none of it is us being unfair. It's just like yeah. this is this is where things are. It's simply the reality. It stinks, yeah. but it's the reality. Yeah, it is the reality, and they are what their record says. And now the ball's in their court to see if they do anything about it. And so mm-hmm. we'll find out. But that'll do it for us tonight. Again, thank you so much for tuning into an episode of Second and Saints. John Hendricks signing off alongside Ross Jackson. You guys have a good one. Enjoy your night. Saints can't ruin it anymore, right? <laughs> Love you. At Kroger Pharmacy, care is making it easy to get vaccinated. Care is helping you stay protected from flu, COVID, and RSV. Seasonal vaccines are available seven days a week with evening hours. Care is giving you a shot at staying healthy this season. Walk in whenever is best and get multiple vaccines in one visit at your local Kroger Pharmacy. So come and get the protection you need while protecting those around you. Kroger Health, a world of care is in store. Visit Kroger.com slash vaccines for more. Restrictions and exclusions apply. See site for details. If you're a facilities manager at a warehouse and your HVAC system goes down, it can turn up the heat. Literally. But don't sweat it. Granger has you covered. Granger offers over a million industrial grade products for all your operations, including warehouse HVAC maintenance. And even better, they offer access to experts and fast delivery, so you and your warehouse can both keep your cool. Call 1 800 Granger, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done.